Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with John Stomberg, director of the Hood Museum at Dartmouth College. John has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, John, for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Always a pleasure to talk about the museum. You have one of the great collections yes. in art in any college or university. Talk about the origins of the collection and its dimension. Well, the collection is actually 248 years old, and it started with the tooth of a woolly mammoth. And by the way, we still have the woolly mammoth tooth. Uh, over the years it grew, it moved from building to building, and didn't become a museum uh, as opposed to a collection until 1986 when the Hood Museum was opened. Until that point it was the Dartmouth Collection of Art, uh, which roamed from building to building. Uh, because it's been so long in the making, it is quite broad and generously endowed with European old masters, antiquities, the American paintings one would expect, but also some surprises. Uh, a really serious collection of art from Papua New Guinea, uh, contemporary Aboriginal uh, Australian art, uh, and we've been working very hard for the last 15 or 20 years on keeping up with global contemporary. So it's a very broad collection, and uh, one of the things that we find axiomatic is that as the population at Dartmouth becomes inter ever more international, that the collection reflect that international uh, student body and become international itself. And it seems that your <clears throat> exhibitions also are in dialogue with that sort of international world of art and culture. Talk about how you program the museum. The, the ideal is to have a responsive museum, a museum that responds to the world that's going on around us. And we can do that especially with exhibitions because there you can take a thesis and drive it home and build programming around it that ties into the curriculum of many professors on campus. It also has to be of interest and significant to the students' lives um, that, we, that we interface with. And, and we also are a community museum. So for all of those reasons, our programs aim to be engaging intellectually, but also uh, contribute to a positive dialogue about change in the world. How do you interact with your faculty? You have one of the great faculties of any college or university, mm -hmm. uh, many with international reputations. How do you interact not only with faculty who come from the art and art historical uh, arena, but also other faculty that one would not normally associate with the arts? So about 20 years ago, the Hood Museum made a critical shift <clears throat> in their thinking about how to deal with the art collection. And that shift was a simple preposition from teaching about art to teaching with art. And once we started thinking about teaching with art, we expanded our horizons to every faculty member on campus. It was an acknowledgement that the greatest asset that Dartmouth College has is its faculty. And it's an enormous brain trust. And we had long since taken advantage of the studio art and um, art history faculty. Oh, but this expanded out into every faculty. So now only about 28% of our time, energy, and money goes into working with art and art history faculty, which means about 72% uh, of our time, energy, and money goes into working with faculty from across the campus. And what kind of form does that take? Well, we have two full-time curators whose job is it, it is to become familiar with the curriculum of various faculty members and reach out and, and make suggestions of ways that we could interact. And that's been going on for so long that we've reached capacity, and this is actually the reason why we're rebuilding it. Uh, we're in the middle of a building campaign. Uh, we'll go from one classroom within the museum to three classrooms. And that's a statement of value in itself because those could have been at public galleries. So right. we're turning those into teaching galleries, which are part of a center for object-based inquiry, uh, where faculty members teach with the art, but they also are getting involved in curating and acquisitions. Our acquisitions committee co includes faculty members from across campus. So you refer to a center for object-based inquiry. Talk about the object and how the object is a repository of knowledge, right. of history, of sensibility, of time. The great benefit of teaching with objects is each object has it, the, the, its own matter of factness. In other words, you can't deny that it is what it is. Somehow it arrived here it and it has this long history. It was created under certain circumstance by somebody, by yes. perhaps yes. even a team. It was the product of, of thinking of that time, not of this time, yet it exists in this time. Right. So there are a number of different things that you can bring to that, which become ever more important in a increasingly uh, digitally mediated world. More and more of our information comes from digital media. One of the uh, very reassuring facts that we've discovered is that 
the more we digitize our collections, the more people want to come in and see the object and engage with it. And so these three classrooms, the Center for Object-Based Inquiry, are based around the idea that we take one object, we place it on the table at a time with a small group of people, and we learn about that one thing. And it, it tells its own stories. We bring new things to it. Uh, there is nothing in the world that can't benefit from reevaluation. And so objects are constantly being reevaluated, and this is why my mantra at, at the Hood is that we need to be the responsive museum. We need to respond to changes in the world. The object doesn't change, but the way we interact with it changes, and the information it gets from us, we get from it, changes over time. Um, there are many uh, approaches to art and art history um, that don't have anything to do with the art and art history that I learned as a graduate student in art history. And we have psychology professors who come in and are very happy to teach with art objects. And they have nothing to do with what I studied. They have their own stories. And the first letting go that the museum had to do was allow other people to control the stories of our objects. So we see the role of the museum as creating a place for dialogue and engagement. And there are certain skills that we're hoping our next generation of students uh, come out of Dartmouth with. And those include things like empathy, and one of the ways you can uh, train an empathic person is to think about why somebody else made this. What were they after when they made this object? And how does it respond now? And how does it work in today's group? And then also to sit in a group and listen to the different responses to what this has to, to say. Somebody from Pakistan is going to have a different uh, viewpoint, perhaps, about a political poster than somebody from Bolivia. So to have those two students in the same room at the same time having a conversation forms a real special spark um, that will hopefully help our students go off and be engaged citizens of the 21st century. Now you also have the greater arts world which is far more focused. It is not about psychology and mathematics and right. uh, the sciences and so on. Um, and you have the, the world of collectors, you have the world of artists, contemporary artists, um, you have the world of other museums. How do you interact with those worlds? Sometimes one gets the impression that a museum that resides within a university or a college um, has a, a different set of principles and a different master, as it would, mm -hmm. um, than other museums. Well, we're very engaged with the contemporary art world. Uh, for one thing, as I said before, it's very important to me that every student at Dartmouth find themselves reflected in the museum. And the best way for me to do that is through contemporary art, global contemporary. I can't at this point build a major collection of ancient Asian art. It's right. probably really not going to happen. Well, outside but, of the grasp of a, of a college. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're, we're just not players in, in acquiring a, in that field. Now, we have generous donors. Right. And we, we are grateful to them all, the, all of the time. But to, to try and, and engage people from different uh, walks of life, it's important to have a wide selection of works of art. And so we are very much a player in global contemporary art where we can actually acquire works of art that are quite significant. Um, and we have a, a curator whose focus is global contemporary. And that's pretty much my focus at this point. Um, so we have at least two people who are working on that area. Uh, and then there's some media that lend themselves to this as well. For example, photography. There is so much photography going on in the world today that having a focus on photography has helped our teaching but also helped us keep, remain engaged with uh, contemporary art. I mean, here we are today in Miami, and we could go to any one of these fairs, and I guarantee 20% of the works of art we'll see are going to be photographically based. Um, so that's a field in which we can still be very much a player. John Stomberg, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Hood Museum at Dartmouth College. It's been and a pleasure. And thank you so much for your insights. Right, it's been my pleasure.